Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. Um, this video is on operations with significant digits. And sometimes they're called significant figures, so if I call them significant figures, they're the same thing as significant digits. Um, if you're not sure how to, to figure out the significant figures of a number, check the video on significant uh, digits, and it'll explain how you do that. When you're working with significant digits, you need to uh, use different methods when you're using different operations. When you use a particular operation when you're multiplying and dividing, or I should not say operation, but a particular method when you're multiplying and dividing, and you use a different method when you're adding and subtracting. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. When you're multiplying and dividing, your answer has to have the same number of significant digits as the quantity that you're using that has the least significant digits. So if we're multiplying 3.5 meters by 52.38 meters, the one with the least significant digits is 3.5. This has two sig figs. 52.38 has four sig figs. So our answer has to have two sig figs. So if we multiply 3.5 times 52.38, we get 183.33. And don't forget that's meters times meters, which is meters squared. However, we're only allowed to have two sig figs in our final answer. So that means we're allowed our one, we're allowed this second digit, we need to look at this number to see if we round our eight up or not. This number is under five, so we can write our answer as 180 meters squared. And this is one of the really important things about significant figures. Your answer must reflect uh, an appropriate accuracy dependent on the numbers that you're using when you start with. And that's why we're following this rule here. Now, when I go to division, I follow the same rule. I have four significant figures in this number, 269.0 meters, and I have three significant figures in 0 0.732 seconds. So when I do the division, 269 divided by 0.732, I get 367.486. And that's meters per second. But I'm only allowed three significant digits. So then I look at my answer, I say, okay, the three is fine, the six is fine, I look at my 7, and I say, all right, it's followed by a 4, so I can stick with the 7. So my answer becomes 367 meters per second, and this would be my correct answer, because I'm using the appropriate significant figures. Now, if you're taking the root of an approximate number, your answer has to have the accuracy of the number under the root sign. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's a square root or a cube root, it applies in any situation. So when I calculated this, I got an answer of 3.5496, and actually this number just went on and on. However, I'm only allowed three sig figs, because that's the number of significant figures I have here. So I look at this number and I say, oh, three's good, five's good, however, this 4 has to be changed to a 5 because it's followed by the 9. So my answer then is 3.55. Now as I said before, we use different rules in addition of subtraction than we do in multiplication and division. When you're adding and subtracting numbers, your answer has to have the same number of, of decimal places as the quantity that has the least number of decimal places. So if we were adding, for example, 1.26, um, 
and 10.982. This number has two decimal places. This number has one decimal place. This number has three decimal places. One, two, three decimal places. So the number that has the least number of decimal places is the 703.1. So when we add this, these numbers up, our answer has to have, we have to round our answer up to, th to one decimal place. Now there are two different approaches that are used to dealing with adding and subtracting numbers. One approach is to round off the numbers before you add or subtract. So then this number would be rounded up to 1.3. This number would be rounded up actually to 11.0. The other approach, and, and then the things are added. The other approach is to round off the numbers after adding and subtracting. Since most of us use calculators when we're adding up numbers like this, it's usually easier to just round up, round up after we have added or subtracted. Now let's work through one question. Addition. Find the sum of 16.3, 4.0683, and 1.007. So we're going to add those up. We have 16.3, 4.0683, and 1.007. If we look at these numbers, we notice that this number has one decimal place. This number has four decimal places and this number has three decimal places. So how many decimal places is our answer going to have? Our answer has to have one decimal place, just the same as this number right here. So let's add this up. We end up with a three here. Eight and seven is 15. Five carry the one. Six and one is seven. Here we have a three. 6 and 4 is 10, add the 1 is 11, 11 carry the 1, this is 21. 21.3753. However, we're only allowed one decimal place in our answer, so we have to look, we say, okay, we're allowed that, but it has to be changed to a 4 because it's followed by the 7. So then our answer would be 21.4. <coughs> now here, we're subtracting 4.32 from 10.7463. This number has four decimal places. This number has two. Our answer has to have two decimal places. So we take 10.7463 and subtract 4.32. Three take away zero is three. Six take away zero is six. 4 take away 2 is 2, 7 minus 3 is 4, and 10 minus 4 is 6. <coughs> we're allowed two decimal places, so we're allowed these two. We take a look at the number that follows the 2, and it's a 6, so our 2 needs to be rounded up to a, C, a, sorry, to a 3, so it becomes 6.43. When we are adding or, or uh, doing calculations with exact and approximate numbers, our answer always has to have the accuracy of the approximate number. It's dependent on the approximate number. So let's say our 4,000 is our exact number. We have exactly 4,000 pens or something and we're going to add it to 3.4. So that becomes 4003.4. Again, our accuracy, or our answer has to have the same accuracy as our approximate number. This number has one decimal place. This number has no decimal places. Our answer has to have one decimal place because that is the accuracy of our approximate number.
Now when we're multiplying an exact number times an approximate number, again we're using the same uh, criteria. The answer has to have the um, accuracy of the approximate number. This number, uh, if you remember from our discussion on significant figures, has four sig figs. This number has two sig figs. So our answer has to have two sig figs. Now if we multiply 4,000 times 3.4, we get 130, no, 13,600. But we're only allowed to have two significant figures, so we must round this number up to 14,000. And that then would be our answer. Here we're subtracting. Again, our answer has to have the um, accuracy of the approximate number. So we're going to have one decimal place in our answer. We have 4,000 minus 3.4. This becomes a 6. That becomes a 6. This becomes a 9, 9, 3. So again, our answer has to have one decimal place because our approximate number has one decimal place. So this is 3996.6. And again, with our division, we're going to have two significant figures in our approximate number and four in our exact number. So our answer must have two sig figs. Let's see what that's going to be. 4,000 divided by 3.4 equals 1176.47. So this is 1176.47. However, we're only allowed to have two sig figs, so we round up. We're allowed this number. We're allowed to have a number there, but it has to be rounded up because of our seven, so we have an answer of 1,200. And that's it for, well, that's one video on working with sig figs. And this was presented by Wise Guys. Have a good day.